Welcome to Let's Watch. Today I will show you a drama adventure action film titled The Grey. Be ready for spoilers ahead. Ottaway's inner voice narrates that he has a job in the middle of nowhere, Alaska, for a major oil company. He feels like he belongs here, surrounded by ex-cons, fugitives and dirtbags, basically men unfit for humanity. He reminisces about his time with his wife. His fondest memory, sadly they have separated. He works as a wolf hunter to protect the workers. His inner voice is a letter he writes wondering why this is happening to him. Maybe it's bad luck or maybe he is poisonous as a man. While staring at his wedding photos, Ottawa clearly does not enjoy his work. He sympathizes with the animals. Earlier, he had even considered killing himself, but a wolf howl somehow saved him. He boards a plane and the ticket clerk urges people to hurry because a storm is coming. On the plane, he is holding on to his letter, but his moment is interrupted by Todd. Todd tries to talk to Ottawa, but he only gives short answers to all his questions. He does not get the hint and Ottawa just tells him to shut up and leave him alone. Todd gets up and changes seats while Ottawa is sleeping. The plane starts to experience some turbulence. Todd tells everyone that when the crap hits the fan, not to do that head between your knees nonsense. Everyone starts shouting on him for even suggesting such a thing. Later the turbulence has calmed down. A screen flickers, the electronics have malfunctioned and the temperature on the plane is dropping. Suddenly, the plane loses altitude, Ottawa cleans the window and sees that the turbine is on fire. The plane begins to fall rapidly and part of the plane collapses. Ottawa is ejected, he falls into the snow and survives. The plane crashes not far from him. The sight is horrific, everything is in ruins. People are screaming for help, Ottawa helps Todd to get up and goes looking for some survivor. Some man even thinks that this is all a dream and he will wake up soon. As the storm subsides, the picture becomes clearer as who is still alive and how many are wounded. Ottawa is called to one of the men who is bleeding. He tells him the sad news that he is dying and tries to comfort him in his final moments. Brooke laughs uncontrollably as a coping mechanism. There are seven of them that they are know of. Diaz points out that Todd just had to open his mouth, believing it was his fault they crashed. Ottawa takes control of the situation. It will be dark soon. They need to build a fire if they do not want to freeze to death. At daybreak, they should be on their way claiming that no help will come and even if it does, it could take weeks. All begin to gather supplies they can use and wood they can burn. Ottawa continues to walk away from the main crash site to find a separate site. A woman is whimpering in pain and he runs towards her to help her when a wolf herd appears. He still tries to shoo the wolf away but he is attacked by the rest of the pack. Two guys from his camp rush to his aid and save him. Ottawa gets up and continues walking in shock, understanding that wolves are bad news. His bite wounds will not stop bleeding. He jokes that he will turn into a wolf man. He assures everyone that the wolves are probably just passing through. But if their den is within 300 miles, they will come after them. When asked by Diaz how he knows so much, Ottawa replies that he gets paid to hunt these things. The wolves know that the group is wounded, they can smell it. He suggests moving the bodies away so that they do not attract unwanted attention. While moving the bodies, Ottawa gets into an argument with Diaz for looting the dead and Diaz backs off. As they sit around a campfire joking and eating, they hear a howl of a wolf. Ottawa grabs a torch to investigate. He sees a huge wolf probably the leader of the pack. When the other's wolf eyes light up, they understand they are surrounded. He orders them not to move. If they start to run, they will be hunted down for showing weakness. The wolves eventually retreat. They decide to patrol in two hours shift. When one of the other guys is assigned to stand guard, he grabs a torch to take a leak. As he does, a couple of wolves suddenly pounce on him and kill him. In the morning, Ottawa discovers fresh blood dripping and one of them missing. He discovers a body outside. When the group gets out, he shares his concern that the wolves did not eat him. They just killed him, which means they are not here for the food. He points out they are probably in the wolf's territory. Ottawa suggests heading for a tree line. The wolves might leave them alone if they see them leave, or at least they could defend themselves better. Diaz argues 
that no one appointed him the head of the group. Otobe says that he is not forcing anyone to follow him. Yet everybody decides to leave. Otobe asks Hendrik to collect all the wallets for the families of the deceased and take them with him. Diaz is visibly upset for wasting time on such a trivial matter. Otobe finds a letter he wrote. Hendrik says his prayer and the six of them sets off. The way is difficult. They barely make any progress, the wind blowing against them. Todd begins to lag behind and is attacked by wolves. Otobe can hear Otobe can barely hear his cries for the help because of the strong wind. He cannot help him because his legs are sinking into the snow. By the time he is near him, he is already been bitten to death. They keep moving, the snow is so deep that it slows them down and it is already nightfall. They notice a pack of wolves running at them from both sides and they try their best to get into the forest as fast as possible. The party falls down a slope and tries to light a fire to keep the wolves at bay. The road and howls of the wolves can be heard all around them. They manage to start a fire and everything goes quiet. Otobe brings some sticks to make spears for self-defense. Despite the predicament, they are all in. Diaz manages to talk crap all about of them and how making spears is stupid. Basically, he is whining continuously. Otobe tells him that talking tough means crap now. Everyone is scared but Diaz is just ashamed to admit it. He is a fool or worse, a liar. Diaz pent up anger burst and he holds a knife to Otterway. He wants to settle things now. As Talaget tries to break up the fight, Diaz elbows him. Otobe kicks the fire to distract him and throws Diaz to the ground, telling him to cut it out. He already had enough of him. At that moment, the alpha wolf comes at them, causing Diaz to crawl back in fear. After showing his dominance, the wolf walks away. Diaz is still panting, scared. Otobe hands him his knife. Diaz apologizes to everyone when suddenly a wolf pounces on him from behind. They manage to kill the wolf. Otobe says it's not the Alpha but the Omega, an outcast he was sent to test Diaz. They cook the wolf and eat it. It tastes awful but it is food. Diaz cuts off the wolf's head as everyone looks on it as disgust. When he's done, he taunts the wolf with the head in his hand and tosses it into the bushes. Whereupon a huge wolf howl rings out that is clearly the roar of an alpha wolf. Diaz is starting to think that maybe this was a bad idea. They grab some torches and get on their way. Brooke is getting worse, having trouble breathing, so they pick a place to camp for the night. The group talks about the odds of surviving a plane crash and how maybe it's fate and they'll make it out alive. Diaz says that's all crap. They tell each other stories about their lives and the other people they care about. Laughing, Otobe remembers his father as Irishman who drank a lot and on his father's wall hung a poem his father had written. A blizzard is coming, so they decide to buckle up. Brooke never woke up. They wait out the blizzard and dry their clothes. Everyone is tired. Otobe finds saw marks. The trees have been cut down meaning there is civilization somewhere. They stand on the edge of the cliff and can hear the river stream. Their best bet is to follow the river to find shelter. But first of the four, they have to get down. Otobe suggests climbing the trees with some sort of rope or jumping off the cliff. But they cannot go back. It's simple. Either the wolves or the trees. Hendrik is the jumper. He says his prayers and jumps. One of the knots comes loose, but Diaz manages to grab it. As if that was not bad enough, snow breaks off the edge. Diaz is barely pulled back. Hendrik is alright and manages to tie the other end to a tree. Diaz gets across safely. Talget is afraid of heights and urges Otobe to go next. When it's Talget's turn, his glasses fell off in the middle and his leg gets stuck in one of the knots. Suddenly, the rope snaps and Talget is pushed into a tree and falls through the branches. Once at the bottom, he hallucinates about his daughter, but they are wolves tearing him apart. Then there were only three left. While climbing down, Diaz falls from the tree and hurts his knee. They continue to walk along the river. Diaz has trouble keeping up and simply tells Otterway and Hendrix to leave him. He hands Hendrix his wallet and refuses to move on and wants to accept his death. Diaz wishing them good luck and they go on their way. A short time later, wolves tear him to pieces. Hendrix asks Otterway what he was doing in the bar the night before they had to fly home. Otterway tries to strung it off but Hendrik says he looked just like Diaz, like he had given up on life. He read Otobe like a book, but it does not matter now. Two wolves start chasing them through the thick snow and Hendrik falls into the river. Because of the strong current, he cannot find his footing. Otobe jumps to his aid. Hendrik's foot gets stuck between the rocks and all Otobe's attempts to help him 
are in vain. Hendrik drowns. Ottobe climbs out of the water with Hendrik's backpack. He is soaked cold alone and surrounded by predators. He snaps and yells at the creator to show him a miracle. When he calms down, he keeps walking barely on his foot. He pauses and with a crushed look on his face, he lays down everyone's wallet in a pile. He looks at their pictures, their children, their loved ones. Everyone has someone waiting for them at home. He checks his letter one last time. It turns out he is in the wolf's den. They went straight to their den from the very beginning. He scuffs at the irony and he is surrounded and the alpha stares down at him. All the wolves back away as the alpha is saying he is mine. He remembers the last time he saw his wife who told him not to be afraid. It turns out she did not leave him but passed away. Ottawa tapes his mini bottles to his right hand and a knife to the other. He smashes the bottles, stands up and starts reciting his father's poem. The rest is left to imagination. That's all from it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel.